Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Tuesday of Holy Week, April 4th here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we are going to do what we ordinarily do, and that is to read our lectionary text for today, talk about it a little bit, and uh, see how the Lord will work in our own hearts um, as we continue to try to pursue Him in faith. Let us uh, open in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, Calm our hearts, calm our minds during this busy week. Help us to rest in your presence and trust in your goodness each and every day. Uh, but as we come before you today to humbly sit before your word, we know, Lord, that it is by your spirit, by your spirit, that we are transformed. So we thank you. We thank you for this time. And we pray that you would bless it. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to start with Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongues from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. In Psalm 146, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our prophetic text today comes from Jeremiah, chapter 15, verses 10 through 21. Woe is me, my mother, that you ever bore me, a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed, yet all of them curse me. The Lord said, Surely I have intervened in your life for good. Surely I have imposed enemies on you in a time of trouble and in a time of distress. Can iron and bronze break iron from the north? Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without price for all your sins throughout all your territory. I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger a fire is kindled that shall burn forever. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. 
Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. And in the New Testament, Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 through 21. Let those of us, then, who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set upon earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 12. Verses 20 through 26. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. And back to our psalm, Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity, and their children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart, and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, 
for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all its troubles. And our final psalm today is Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. What theme do we think we're seeing today? Um, I, think, I think what we're seeing a lot of is this concept of being in service to the Lord is not always easy in fact, can cause some pretty significant consternation. Um, I think this Jeremiah passage, um, this complaint anyway that Jeremiah brings to the Lord, it's like, I've done the things that you've asked me to do. Why do people dislike me? Why do people hate me even? Why do they curse me? Um, this whole idea of uh, I'm trying to live this righteous life, why is it not going well with me? And I know this, this seems to be a regularly occurring theme in, right. in so much of what we look at. Um, and, and I know we'll talk about some of the other passages, but I'm starting to, well, maybe not starting, increasingly uh, being reminded regularly that this is a pretty predominant theme throughout all of Scripture, all of Scripture. Sure. All of scripture. And so maybe I wonder then what becomes the lesson for us, we who, we who desire to live lives of comfort and ease and prosperity yes. and you know privilege or whatever it might happen to be, and looking at the Scripture, looking at the, the prophets who follow uh, the Lord, uh, the psalmists who write these, these psalms, um, that strange mix of there are problems, but regular praise. Right. There is this, it's not easy. What God values and what the world values are very different things. And so when we do act in service and when we do act obediently, I think it's contrary to what the world expects or what the world values or gives weight to. And so it is difficult. I think that it's easy to fall into that idea of if things are not going well, then we must be doing something wrong, which I think sometimes scripture indicates the very opposite. Right. And, um, but with that, um, our hope is still in Christ. And, and this world is not, this is not our final destination. This is not, so even though there are difficulties, there is still, God does still bless, and there is still a worthiness, and there is still a need for praise and glory and all of those things because that that is due to him because of what right. he is doing and, and, um, and because of his goodness and because of his character. Um, and, and with that, he still, you know, he still offers promises. He offers those promises of Psalm 91. And... It doesn't necessarily make it easy, though. Right. Uh, you know, Philippians, um, Paul, at the beginning of the, of the book, talks about how what has happened to him, his arrest, his imprisonment, his, um, 
you know, having this freedom taken away has actually been to advance the gospel, right. has served a purpose. Uh, so when we get to chapter three and we see Paul inviting his brothers and sisters to join in imitating him, to live a life according to the example that, that he has. Um, and then this, starting at verse 18, for many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. And I'm challenged by that because ordinarily we would see the cross as the enemy. We would see the the instrument of, of torture and death as something to be avoided. But here, Paul reverses the whole thing and says that there are people who live as enemies to that cross, how, um, you know, verse 19, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, they glory in their shame, their minds are set on earthly things. And as you were saying, if our citizenship is in heaven, um, we are looking forward to something different than, better than this place. Uh, and, and it's a challenge. And I do think, especially during Holy Week, as we are approaching the, the culmination of Jesus' life, where right. he, uh, I'm, I'm thinking upcoming Monday, Thursday, he gives us that new commandment to love one another as he has loved us, Good Friday, where he is betrayed and tortured and crucified. Um, it, the world can be and, and is a very dark and, and dangerous and deadly place to those who are, uh, well, if it was dangerous and dark and deadly to Jesus, Jesus himself, himself, why would be, we be surprised that it is also the same for his followers? And so even going back to Jeremiah, obviously uh, Old Testament prophet preceded uh, Jesus in earthly ministry, but was speaking inspired by the Holy Spirit to do these things. Um, Wow, and I wonder sometimes when the Psalms cry, you know, how long, O oh Lord? You know, like yes. how long are we to be in this place? How long are we to uh, be in this strange mix of uh, the difficulties that and the trials that we face, yet the celebration of the goodness of God? Right. I'm, I'm sure you remember, um, but it's been several weeks ago, and, and of course those of you that join us on Sunday mornings, you, you may recall this, but you preached right before we came into Lent, and I then referenced it the first week of Lent when I preached, but this, this mountain, this idea of these mountaintop experiences, and it's easy to be on the mountaintop, you know, during the transfiguration, Jesus is there, it is revealed as to who he is, you know, God reveals himself, or reveals, um, you know, speaks and declares Jesus son again. And, and in that moment, um, the disciples want to stay there because it's so easy to be in those experiences when God is so apparent and he is so obvious, but you said in that sermon, and it has really stuck with me, um, we have to come off the mountain. We have to go to the valley because that's where the work is done. And so I think that we forget that. I really do. And I think as, as this theme, as I'm reading myself in, in other places besides just this, but this theme of, of difficulties and suffering, um, that's where the work is done. That's where we do have an opportunity. You know, he does give us that new commitment to love our neighbors and to love God, love neighbor. When we come back into the valleys, I think, just like you said, that's where the work is done. That's where we have the opportunity to love. And um, and we're challenged to love because that's not the easy place. That's not God right there in front of you in your face saying, this is who I am. No, that's trusting. That's, um, that's leaning into the character of God instead of it just being in right. your face. It's you and having you our own to... character changed in, in return. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that as we go through this whole theme of suffering, I think that for me, I think it is a good reminder that that is, that is where the work is done. That is where the opportunity to shine the light. That is where the opportunity to love, even when it's difficult, that's when those opportunities are presented. And we then can hmm. be transformed. We can be changed. We can 
Um, we can also be hardened. I mean, it's it's a choice. I mean, right, if there's right. some choice there. Um, there's some some faith, and there's some some asking for help because we certainly can't do it on our own. Right. But I think that that to me, you know, like I said, I I don't know that has stuck with me, and as I've been reading through Lent over and over, that has come back to me. It's the valleys where the work is done. It's in the difficulties where the work is done. Right. That's where the opportunities are presented to us, and that we have. It is. It's an opportunity. It's a challenge. But this is where we can shine. This is what we can do. This is when we can do and where we can do what he's calling us to do. Sort of along the lines of, you know, mountaintop. I think there's many of us who pursue continual mountaintop experiences. They go from one celebration to the next celebration to the next celebration. And in a way, uh, if it kind of becomes even... Um, a drug. They need that. Right. They need that rush. They need that uh, celebration. They need whatever it might happen to be. Right. Uh, maybe because life has been difficult for many people, and right. so obviously embracing difficulties is very difficult. In fact, right. this is why we. This is why Paul has to write what he does write. Right. You know, over remember and over, over again. and over again. Remember. Well, you know, being invited into the suffering that Paul is experiencing, but Paul is saying, remember, this is what our Lord and Savior did. And so if we want to be closer to Jesus, it requires a greater understanding of the suffering and the pain. And so jumping to that John passage, we remember at the beginning of John where uh, the author writes that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. And right. here in this text, we have Greeks that are coming. There's no indication that they're Hellenized Jews. It says they're Greeks, people right. that might not have even, uh, people that might have come to a to the spectacle of the Jewish festival, maybe to just kind of laugh or whatever. They find something out about Jesus and they say, we want to see Jesus. And then how Jesus responds, now my hour has come, that there's some indication that uh, that the message, Jesus' message is moving beyond his Right. expected people and is actually going out to accomplish what it was supposed to do from the very beginning right. to be available for all of the people of the world and how it's easy for us to think that Jesus came to you know to save my own life Jesus came right. to save my own specific circumstance Jesus my family whatever might happen to be right. my 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 but really it's all about sharing it right. with people beyond and, and, and then even here where Jesus gives this very um, specific example, if there's a grain of wheat that just remains, that's all it's ever going to be. Right. But if it dies, then it will bear much fruit. Uh, so are we willing to follow the example of Jesus? Are we willing to die to ourselves that more life would come. And in fact, what Jesus said, if you if you love your own life, ultimately you're going to lose it. But if you, as David preached on Sunday, if you yes. treat your own life as insignificant compared to the surpassing love of Christ, then it will actually bear much fruit. It's not that our lives are unimportant, uh, but compared to the surpassing love of God, compared to what we read in the Psalms of his steadfast love, enduring forever and ever, if we pursue little tiny things, we're gonna be ultimately left with little tiny things. If we're willing to die to ourselves, then we get to experience even greater things right. than we can possibly imagine. Uh, we get to experience the love of Christ being extended to the entire world, where it actually includes all of the reconciliation that the world claims to want, you know, right. all of these things. How is that ever going to happen if we continually get increasingly selfish as opposed to increasingly dying to ourselves so that right. others then can be reconciled into the family of faith? Right. Mm -hmm. And in that in that statement, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. You know, all throughout, um, even the disciples, you know, he spoke in parables, he he taught, he, he walked, he preached, he performed all these miracles, but I don't think they still didn't get it. And then in and then as we go closer to Good Friday and we're, you know, a step closer to the cross every day, even even in the moments of the cross, they didn't get it. They hid, they left. It, 
what are we going to do now? And they didn't get it. But the hour had come that there would be no doubt mm -hmm. because they had put him, you know, just you said put him in that box. And as long as he fits in that little box, David said the same thing as well. As long as he fits in, this is the kind of king that we were expecting. I, the hour had come that it was apparent. There was no doubt. He was not an earthly king. He is not an earthly king. He is beyond that. And um, and he 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 overcame that. There, like I said, there's you can't put him in this box. He is more than that. Right. And so this this hour has come that the true revelation that he is more than right. we could possibly have ever right. hoped or expected or right. planned for that, him to that, be. That he will be glorified but glorified in a way that's so different than what, than we, what we thought, thought. or what humanity thinks so, or expected. So Jesus is not an earthly king, but he is coming to establish his kingdom on earth. Um, it just kind of reminds us of the Lord's Prayer, right? You know, right. Uh, <laughs> your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, your right. kingdom come. Um, yeah, good challenging stuff today. Uh, just to think about how try, if we try to accomplish this in our own efforts, our own strength, well, of course we would fail. Right. Uh, right. Nobody can do that. No. Nobody can willingly go into suffering absent a overriding uh, uh, support or, you know, the, well, for Christians anyway, the, certainly the presence of the Holy Spirit to do that which we've been called to do uh, and I think just jumping back to that Psalm 146 that you read at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, and I know we've talked about Psalm 146 many times but just right. kind of in conclusion starting there at the the end of verse 7 you know the Lord sets the prisoner free the Lord opens the eyes of the blind the Lord lifts up those who are bound down the Lord loves the righteous the Lord watches over the strangers and upholds the widow and the orphan um, the Lord will reign forever um, who accomplishes the good things in our life, uh, in our lives? Well, the Lord does all of these things. We are called to respond obediently to that, no doubt. But who is the one that's at work? The Christ. Lord. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, good stuff. Yeah. That you is. want to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Gracious Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for offering us hope. Thank you for being a king that is so much greater than what we could have ever um, anticipated or planned or that we could have orchestrated on our own. Thank you for your graciousness and your mercy and that in that grace and in that mercy that you offer to us, um, that you gave the ultimate sacrifice so that uh, we can be invited into um, this relationship with you. And I just pray that as we um, go through Holy Week and, and even beyond, that those that are facing difficult times, that, that they do lean into you and that they do recognize that your hand is still at work and that you are present and um, that you are a good God who loves us and cares for us and offers us compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, two days in a row on Holy Week. All right. We're on a roll. Right. We will see if we can continue to do this, but I certainly am glad that we had the opportunity today, Natalie, to do so. Blessings, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.